uh, how to speed healing. And I see some questions on here um, with regard to uh, natural remedies or other types of things, like what can I put on my scar to improve it? By far and away, the most important thing to remember is we need scars to stay adequately hydrated so that they can help new skin in the proliferative phase. So there's three phases of healing. So there's inflammation we talked about that really happens starting within the first day. Um, within the first couple of weeks, the proliferative, proliferative phase refers to the ability of new skin to start, start leapfrogging over the wound that was created, whether it's stitched or an open wound. And that's a really key part. So if a wound is adequately hydrated, the skin cells have less resistance to be able to leapfrog over themselves and cover that wound. If is the, the old adage that, you know, to let a wound breathe and air out, if, if a wound is not adequately hydrated and too dry, what ends up happening is the natural progression is uh, forming a scab. We call that a, a hemorrhagic crust because there's bleeding and growth factors that go into forming that scab. And each time the scab is either artificially removed, picked off, or sloughed off, it leaves kind of a crater uh, or an etched line if, if, if your wound has been stitched. And so it's super critical to be able to keep a wound adequately hydrated. And the best way and the easiest way that I recommend doing that is with regular petrolatum or petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Um, another, uh, you know, component of that or option is Aquaphor. These are all very commonly um, attainable items that are in the pharmacies. And it's, what's nice about it is it not only hydrates, but as a thick ointment vehicle, it allows some degree of protection from the el environmental elements around you, whether it be dust, debris, or microorganisms. So um, that's really, really critical. And how, for how long is it critical? Well, until all the raw areas of the wound are completely healed so that we we want whether it be the new skin or scar to be an even kind of smooth texture whenever you're running your finger over it if there's any weeping if it appears raw or wet um, you're not done and i would encourage uh, you to continue applying that vaseline natural remedies you know this is a really uh i would call it an opportunity to learn because i think most surgeons are uh, or at physicians in general, this is not um, a field in which we've allocated a lot of time, energy, and resources to investigate. Um, we're really at the mercy of the evidence available to us, not to say that natural remedies cannot help. Uh, some uh, commercial, commercialized natural remedies, um, just to throw, throw a couple names out that are common that I hear in clinic, but I have no conflict of interest, uh, would be something like Midderma, which is an elantoin uh, compound, which is a plant extract. Um, sometimes people talk about, um, you know, ingesting things like uh, arnica, which is also a byproduct of a plant. Um, these are things that don't have a lot of evidence behind them, albeit there have been reports of anecdotal benefit, but they can also uh, sometimes induce extra inflammation and irritation because the dosing and the application itself is not widely studied, prospectively meaning from start to finish. And, and there's really only uh, evidence in so far as patients individually report uh, benefit. And we have no way of tracking whether or not there's a significance to it. Doesn't mean there may not be a benefit. It just means that we don't know how to counsel, uh, counsel folks. And I would argue that really the only alternative to um, so the use of Vaseline to keep the scar hydrated is if someone is particularly, uh, uh, whether in their history or their family has a known history of what we call hypertrophic or bulky scars or even keloids. Keloids are, are basically hypertrophic or bulky scars that grow beyond the initial scar itself. So there's a, not only do they grow in height, but they grow in width. Um, Silicone uh, has actually been shown to have mixed evidence, but I, 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 I'd venture to say that there's more evidence than other homeopathic or naturopathic remedies uh, because it actually allows us 
to diminish some of those overproduced growth factors um, that don't know how to turn off when they should turn off. And so whether it be silicone based gels or silicone sheets applied over the wounds, um, they sometimes can mitigate the risk of a bulky scar or a scar with uh, a texture that's not like normal skin. Uh, but I would defer those discussions again to the one-on-one -on -one that you have at the time of your inform informed consent with your surgeon.